you won't believe some of these mythical creatures from Celtic mythology. The Banshee, a shrieking spirit that heralds someone's demise. The Dullahan, who influenced the creation of the Headless Horseman. And the mighty King Balor, who could kill with but a glance of his third eye. Today we're going to explore and discover these amazing beings, so sit back and relax as we talk about the Celtic mythical creatures here on Wild Mythology. The Nekalavi, a grotesque entity hailing from the Orkney Islands in northern Scotland, stands as the epitome of malevolence within the realm of Scottish folklore. Undoubtedly the most dangerous creature in Celtic mythology, this horrifying beast is shrouded in tales of its toxic breath, capable of unleashing plagues, inducing droughts, and annihilating crops in mere moments. According to legend, the Nekola V takes on a nightmarish form, resembling a skinless centaur with a scarred torso, elongated arms, and a monstrous head emerging from the back of a ghastly horse. Its bony arms are able to reach the ground, enabling the creature to effortlessly ensnare and tear its prey to pieces. The mere scent of burning seaweed or kelp triggers a berserk rampage, leaving destruction in its wake. The Nekola V is so powerful that only an ancient Orkney Island spirit named Sea Mither is able to semi-control it. She is able to lock the Nekola V away in the sea during the summer season, where the demonic beast stays until the beginning of fall. The only way to even come close to avoiding a Nekola V is by crossing a freshwater source. A Nekola V is unable to cross or be near fresh water, but that doesn't mean it won't figure out a way to get to you. After all, it is an extremely malicious creature. Selkie are interesting creatures from Celtic mythology that take the form of seals. What makes them so interesting is that they are able to shed their seal skins, allowing female selkies to change into beautiful human women and male selkies into handsome men. But in order to turn back into seals, a selkie has to put back on their shedded skin. Male selkies will usually find women who are dissatisfied and have children with them. But in most Selkie legends, though, a human man will find a Selkie's shedded seal skin and hide it. The man will then compel the Selkie to become his wife, and the Selkie will agree because it cannot return to the sea without its shedded skin. If the Selkie finds her hidden skin, she'll take it back and return to the sea, even if she has had children with her human husband. The children born to a human and a selkie can usually be distinguished by the webbing in between their fingers and toes. The Will-o'-the-Wisp, also known by various names such as Ignis Fatus, Jack-o'-lantern, or Fool's Fire, is a phenomenon deeply rooted in folklore and mythology around the world. While the specifics of the legend may vary across different cultures, the Will-O-Wisp is typically described as a phosphorescent light, or a flickering flame that hovers over the ground, appearing in places with damp or marshy conditions, luring unsuspecting travelers off their path. In Celtic legends, the Will-O-Wisp is believed to be a nature spirit that can be both benevolent and malevolent. While in most legends, the Will-O-Wisp is described as leading people off the beaten path and to their doom, there have been stories where Will-O-Wisps guide lost travelers to safety and children back to their parents. There are even legends of Will-O-Wisps marking the location of buried treasure. Though in these cases, one would have to use a magical item that shows you hidden things, such as a hand of glory, in order to make sure that the Will-O-Wisp isn't tricking you and leading you to danger. Banshees, ethereal beings from Irish folklore, are fae spirits renowned for heralding the impending demise of an individual through a chilling and ominous shriek. Typically depicted as either an elderly or youthful woman with cascading looks, they are often adorned in a grey hooded cloak. In the tapestry of legend, 
banshees served as harbingers, notifying families of the passing of one of their own. They originally were only responsible for four main clans of families in Ireland, but as members married outside of the family, the legend of the Banshee became more widespread. They became known as Omens of Death, and it was said if you were ever unlucky to hear a Banshee's wail, then someone close to you or possibly yourself would soon perish. In instances of the demise of someone of great significance or holiness, multiple banshees are said to converge, emitting a collective and mournful wail. The origin of the banshee is said to find its roots in an ancient Irish mourning practice, where a woman often referred to as a keening woman would vocalize grief-laden songs during funeral rites. Alor was the king of the Fomorians, a group of chaotic monstrous beings or giants that originally inhabited the seas around Ireland. The Fomorians were the enemies of the Tua de Danann, another supernatural race that settled in Ireland. Though the Fomorians and the Tua de Danann battled for years, it was when Balor became king that the Fomorians got the upper hand. He enslaved the Tua de Danann and imposed heavy restrictions and a great tribute upon them. This persisted until a pivotal moment when Balor's grandson, Lu, emerged as a rallying force for the Tua de Danann. The enslaved, united under the king of the Tua de Danann and Lu's leadership, confronted Balor and the Fomorians in a fierce and deadly war. But it was not an easy fight. You see, Balor had a third eye in the middle of his forehead, a third eye that had the ability to instantly kill any that looked upon its gaze. As the conflict neared its climax, Balor dealt a fatal blow by slaying the king of the Tue de Danann, leaving Lu as the sole remaining threat. Unfortunately for Balor, as he was about to open his third eye to kill his grandson, Lu quickly pulled out his slingshot and killed Balor with a perfect shot right through the middle of the giant's forehead, thus ending the tyranny of Balor and the Fomorians. In European mythology and folklore, there are many tales surrounding the fairy folk, stories filled with mischief, kindness, and malevolence. Among these beings, changelings embody a unique blend of all three traits, being the deformed and peculiar offspring of the Fae. When the fairy folk found themselves with deformed children, a curious practice emerged. They would exchange these changelings for the offspring of humans, often opting for the human children possessing the fairest and most beautiful features, a reflection of the characteristics coveted by the fairy folk. Following this exchange, the human child would either grow up as a servant to the fairies or be embraced and cherished by the fey family that adopted them. In contrast, legends surrounding changelings tell of their unconventional growth paths, manifesting as sickly or failing to reach the expected size. These peculiar beings exhibited abnormal levels of intelligence and remarkable talents and arts like dancing, singing, and playing instruments from an incredibly young age. Discovering the switch, families would subject the changeling to torment in the hopes of prompting the return of their real child. Alternatively, changelings faced abandonment in the wild, removing them as potential threats to the human family. The Dullahan, a significant inspiration for the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow, is a headless figure from Irish folklore, often depicted as a man or woman riding a black horse and clutching their severed head. According to legend, the Dullahan's head possesses moving eyes capable of seeing far and wide in the dark, a ghastly grin stretching from cheek to cheek, and a lantern-like glow. According to the chilling legend, Dullahans wield human spines as whips and use them to bind those who witness their presence. In legends where Dullahans have horses that pull carriages, they are said to be filled with funeral items and adorned with bones. 
In myth, a Dullahan would relentlessly ride until reaching a specific home. The ominous belief was that when a Dullahan ceased its ride, someone's demise was imminent. Upon stopping, the Dullahan would approach the home's door, and its decapitated head would shriek a name. The unfortunate person named would reportedly have their souls drained by the Dullahan, succumbing to immediate death on the spot. Legend holds that the only known defense against a Dullahan is the presence of gold. As the lore goes, the Dullahan's origins trace back to the deity Krom Dopf, a once revered fertility god who demanded decapitated sacrifices. Following the decline of his worship due to the rise of Christianity, the deity allegedly transformed into the first Dullahan, seeking revenge and a means to continue his thirst for blood and sacrifices. Kelpies are mischievous and dangerous creatures from Celtic mythology. They're said to be one of the most common mythical creatures in Celtic lore, since there seems to be a Kelpie legend associated with every sizable body of water in Scotland. Described as a black horse-like creature with hooves that face the opposite direction, the Kelpie stands beside or in a body of water, waiting for those to pet it, usually children. Once a child pets or gets on the kelpie, it will rush into the water, carrying the child to be devoured in a watery grave. The kelpie is also able to shapeshift, usually shifting into a handsome man to attract young women. The best way to recognize a transformed kelpie is by looking at his hair. If there are water weeds in his hair, you can bet you're dealing with a kelpie. The Dorhu is a half-otter, half-dog creature from Irish folklore, said to be 10 to 15 feet long. It spends its time in Irish lakes and attacks humans who get too close to the waters. What makes a Dorhu very interesting is its fur, which according to legend is impenetrable. One legend tells of a woman who went to bathe by a lake. When she screamed, her husband rushed to her location, only to find a Dorhu sleeping on her mutilated body. Furious with the beast, the husband attacked it with a knife, but as he brought the blade down, it bounced off the creature's fur. What commenced was a ferocious battle that eventually ended with the Dorhu's death when the husband stabbed its eye. But as the Dorhu was dying, it let out a bellowing sound that attracted its mate. The second Dorhu would go on to battle the husband, resulting in the husband receiving numerous injuries. Eventually, though, he was able to kill the second hybrid creature, but he died soon after of blood loss. Freigol, the red dragon, and Freigwen, the white dragon, are two mighty dragons from Welsh mythology. The red dragon is said to represent the Welsh people, while the white dragon is said to represent the Anglo-Saxons. The legend goes that the red dragon had made its home on the coast of Wales and lived in peace with the Welsh people. But then, one day, the white dragon invaded, attacking the red dragon in its home. The red dragon was enraged by this and attacked the white dragon in return. Their battle went on for weeks, causing the land to become barren and misshapen. Their fight also caused numerous deaths for both people and animals. Eventually, King Lud of Britain had enough, and so he had a pit dug up and filled with mead in Oxford. The king then called for the dragons, and the two took a break from their fight and drank the mead until they fell asleep. The king then wrapped the dragons in satin and buried them in the pit. Centuries later, another king was trying to have a castle built, but it kept getting destroyed by the Saxons. An advisor told the king that a boy with no natural father must be sacrificed in order to correct this, and eventually a boy was found, a boy named Merlin. Hearing what the king planned to do to him, Merlin told the king the legend of the two dragons, stating that if the red dragon was victorious, the Saxons would retreat. So the king dug up the dragons who continued their fight after being freed, 
and eventually the red dragon triumphed over the white dragon, killing it in battle and causing the Saxons to retreat. In Cornish legends, the Anku is a spectral being intricately tied to the realm of death, manifesting as a skeletal figure wielding a scythe. Adorned in a somber black robe and a sizable hat, this otherworldly entity is described as a guardian of the afterlife. Roaming the countryside on a spectral cart, the Anku's dual purpose is to gather the departed souls and safeguard graveyards from potential grave robbers. According to the lore, a fresh Anku emerges each new year. The first individual to pass away in the new year assumes the mantle of the Anku, shouldering the responsibility of harvesting souls until their tenure concludes at the close of the year. Thus, a cycle unfolds with a new Anku ushered in annually to collect the souls and protect the graveyards of the dead. The Fachin is a creature from Scottish folklore often described as having a misshapen and deformed body. The creature is typically depicted as having only one of each body part stacked on top of each other. Starting from the ground, a lone, robust leg supports a chest emerging above the thigh. Extending from the midsection is a slender arm, and perched atop the upper chest is a head, bearing only a single eye. The Fachan is sometimes also said to be covered in hair, and has either one or two ears growing out of the sides of its head. The Fachan is believed to be a solitary and reclusive creature, preferring to stay hidden in the desolate landscapes of the highlands. Legend suggests that it is a creature of the night, and encounters with it are rare. Some tales describe it as a guardian of the wilderness, while others portray it as a more malevolent being capable of causing harm to those who cross its path, usually with a weapon described as a club, enveloped in twenty chains adorned with venomous apples. Pixies are creatures that have roots in Celtic traditions and have been a part of the legends in Cornwall and Devon, regions in southwestern England. Pixies are often described as small, mischievous, supernatural beings. They are believed to be around the height of a small child with pointed ears and a humanoid appearance. While nowadays pixies are often depicted as wearing green outfits with pointed hats or ragged rags that they discard when gifted new clothes, the older stories and traditions tell of them wearing hooded cloaks that conceal a dagger. Despite their small size, they are considered powerful and capable of both benevolent and malevolent actions. Pixies are said to inhabit natural landscapes, especially forests, moors, and other secluded areas. They are believed to have their own communities and may live in underground burrows or fairy mounds. Some legends suggest that they only come out at night where they enjoy wrestling. The relationship between pixies and humans in folklore is complex. While they generally are helpful to humans, they also enjoy playing pranks with a reputation for misleading travelers and children. The werewolves of Ossery are men from medieval Irish legend with the ability to transform their soul into a wolf. Ossery is a historical region in Ireland, encompassing parts of present-day Southern Ireland. According to legend, these men were descendants of the bloodline that gave rise to the kings of Ossery, meaning one or more of the kings could have been werewolves. Unlike most werewolves who transform their body into a wolf form, the werewolves of Ossery had to leave their human bodies behind. Once they found a safe location, these men would lie down and a wolf would appear shooting out of their human bodies. They could then go explore and hunt in their wolf form, although any injury they sustained was transferred back to their unconscious human form. While these werewolves were allowed to unleash their inner wolf whenever they liked, they had to be very careful. In order to return to human form, the wolf would have to jump back into its own human body. If their human body was moved or kidnapped, then they would be stuck in their wolf form forever, until they could find where their human form disappeared to. 
A cat Sith is either a spectral spirit or witch that is able to transform into a cat only nine times. The cat Sith is depicted as a large dog-sized black cat with a white spot on its chest. The people of the Scottish Highlands believed that cat Siths could steal a dead person's soul before it moved on to the afterlife by stepping over the body before the burial. According to legend, Watchmen would have to distract the cat Siths from the bodies with creative games of wrestling, jumping, and riddles. They would even use catnip and music to ward off the felines. Fires, though, were not allowed anywhere near the body as the warmth attracted the cat Siths. Another legend says that a cat Sith appears on the night of Samhain and that it would bless a house and its family if they left out a saucer of milk. Those who didn't would have their cows cursed to be milkless for an entire year. In Ireland, cat Siths were thought to be witches who had the ability to transform into cats, although they were only able to do this nine times, and after the knife transformation, the witch would forever take the form of a cat. Thus, this legend could possibly be the origin of the idea that cats have nine lives. The Coo Sith is a phantom dog from Irish and Scottish folklore. It's described to be the size of a cow with dark green shaggy fur. According to legend, the canine is a harbinger of death because it takes the souls of the sick and the recently deceased to the other world. While known to be a silent hunter, the Ku Sith's bark has a terrible ability. When a Ku Sith barks, it lets out three loud barks that can be heard from miles away. Whomever hears all three barks will be filled with unimaginable fear, enough to cause humans to die in shock. The only way to avoid all three barks is to quickly run inside a building or cover your ears before the third bark echoes. Leprechauns are famous supernatural beings from Irish folklore that are solitary, usually making their homes in underground caves or hollow fairy trees in rural areas. In modern times, leprechauns are famously recognizable by their green hats and jackets, as well as their red beards and lucky charms. But the original appearance of the leprechaun is actually very different from today's commercialized look. Originally, leprechauns were described as old men who stood two to three feet high. They wore red jackets with several buttons, gray stockings, as well as black buckled shoes, a brown frieze jacket over their red one to protect themselves from the weather, and on top of their heads sat a cocked hat. One of the most famous characteristics of leprechauns is that they love gold. They have the amazing ability of easily finding gold in the earth, and are very good at protecting it. They also enjoy playing tricks on humans by leaving fool's gold out in the open, causing any thieves of the fool's gold to be cursed with bad luck. They are also known as amazing cobblers and are the shoemakers of the Fae. According to legend, once a human captures a leprechaun, if they take their eyes off it for even a second, the leprechaun will disappear into thin air. But if they are able to keep a good hold on one and their eyes on it, they can request three wishes from the leprechaun. Though one should be careful with the wording of the wishes since leprechauns can spin the wishes to have a negative effect. Brownies are nocturnal household beings that emerge under the cover of night while the occupants of the house are in slumber. Brownies then engage in a range of tasks such as household chores, agricultural duties, and in the ancient folklore, safeguarding hidden treasures. To appease these elusive creatures, homeowners traditionally leave offerings, commonly a bowl of milk or cream near the hearth. Notoriously sensitive, brownies are quick to take offense and may permanently vacate the home if they perceive an insult or feel they are being taken advantage of. Offering them clothing is also a sure way to prompt their departure. These mischievous entities are known for their playful antics and are known to hand out punishments or play pranks on lazy servants. In moments of fury, they are even said to transform into malevolent bogarts, evil household spirits that cause the feeling of great fear. 
typically operating in solitude and shunning visibility. Brownies are described in various ways across regions, commonly depicted as unsightly, brown-skinned beings covered in hair. In ancient narratives, they were often portrayed as human-sized or larger, whereas contemporary depictions tend to portray them as small and withered. Whether naked or clad in tattered garments, brownies possess the ability to become invisible and occasionally take on the form of animals. Redcap is an evil, vicious goblin that inhabits abandoned castles where insidious deeds were performed. Redcap is often portrayed as a small, heavy goblin with elongated, prominent teeth, gaunt fingers tipped with raptor-like talons, fiery red eyes, long unkept hair, a pike staff or large knife clutched in his hand, iron boots, and his distinctive red cap adorning his head. Those seeking refuge within his territory face the peril of massive stones flung at them. Should he succeed in claiming a victim, he stains his cap with their blood, rendering it a deep chrisman. Legend says he is incredibly strong and so heavy that he is impervious to human strength. However, he is said to be weak to the words of scripture or the presence of a crucifix. In the face of these symbols, he emits a mournful yell before vanishing in flames, leaving only one of his teeth behind. A wild haggis is an adorable creature from Scottish folklore, often invoked in a humorous and whimsical manner. According to the tales, the wild haggis is said to be a small, furry creature with two legs that are shorter on one side than the other. The story goes that there are two distinctive species of wild haggis, one with shorter left legs and the other with shorter right legs. This supposed anatomical quirk is believed to help the haggis maintain balance as it navigates the uneven slopes and hillsides of the Scottish Highlands. Local legends often tell of the challenges faced by those attempting to catch a wild haggis, with humorous stories about the creature's agility and elusiveness. The haggis is also famously associated with Scottish cuisine, particularly as the true and real source of the traditional dish haggis. The puka are creatures from Celtic folklore known for their mischievous and unpredictable nature. Pukas are shapeshifters often taking on the form of various animals such as cats, dogs, goats, and horses. You can always tell when a puka has shapeshifted because its animal form will always have black fur and glowing golden eyes. It may also take on the form of a human with animal features, such as a tail, whiskers, or furry ears. The true form of a puka, though, is very different depending on the location of the legend. Some say they're small, furry, goblin-like creatures. Another say their form is in shroud and a large cloak, with the exception of their goat skeleton heads. And another suggests that they're covered entirely in shadow, forming a small elf-like blob. While there are many variants and names of the pukas around Europe, they're usually regarded as creatures of cunning and mischief. Their most famous act of trickery involves them enticing humans to take a ride on their back. They'll then give those that agree a ride of their life and then afterwards drop them off where they were picked up, usually with the human in a shocked state. According to Irish mythology, the puka can be scared away by the appearance of something sharp made of iron. Pukas are supposed to be less mischievous in the month of November, since during this time they eat the leftover harvest. Deragdu, meaning red blood sucker, is a deadly creature that was once a beautiful human woman. Sometimes referred to as the Irish vampire, the legend of the Deragdu is sad and frightful. According to the legend, the Deragdu was a gorgeous woman who lived 2,000 years ago and was known for her blood-red lips and her fair, snow-like skin. Men came from far and wide to ask her father for her hand, but the beautiful woman wasn't interested in any of those men because she had fallen in love with a nice peasant boy. Unfortunately, the woman's father had other plans. 
he sold his daughter's hand to an old man who horrendously abused her, both mentally and physically. The old man's favorite activity was drawing blood from his new wife and watching as the liquid covered her fair skin. Hoping that the peasant boy she loved would save her, she waited and suffered for months. Eventually, though, she gave up hope and starved herself to death. According to legend, though, before she died, she swore that she would get revenge on those who wronged her. She was soon buried, and regrettably, the villagers that buried her didn't stack stones on top of her grave. This was a mistake, for that very night, the undead beautiful woman rose from her grave. Thus, the Dergudu was born. That night, she killed her father and sucked out all of the blood of her abusive husband. Legend says that she still roams the land, luring children and men with her siren-like voice and beauty. Once enthralled, she leads them to their doom as she sucks out all of their lifeblood. Avertak, according to an ancient Irish legend, was a tyrant dwarf who was cruel and malevolent towards the people of Ireland. He used his magic to torment people and would also drink the blood of his subjects. Finally, a neighboring chieftain had enough and vanquished the cruel dwarf. As a sign of disrespect, the chieftain buried the dwarf underground in a standing position. Unfortunately, next day, he reappeared and started slaughtering people again. So the chieftain slayed him once again and buried him the same way. But yet again, the dwarf reappeared. Baffled, the chieftain went to a druid for knowledge on how to properly kill the tyrant. The druid told him to bury the dwarf upside down. Doing so would stop his magic from bringing him back to life. So the chief listened and slayed the dwarf for the final time. And to this very day, the tyrant dwarf lays underground upside down. The Slua is a supernatural and malevolent force in Irish and Scottish folklore, often associated with the spirits of the restless dead. Also known as the Host or the Fairy Host, the Sluha is said to consist of the souls of sinners, particularly those who committed heinous deeds during their lifetime. Descriptions of the Slua vary, but they are generally depicted as a horde of dark, airborne spirits. Some tales describe them as dark, shadowy figures with malevolent intent, while others portray them as winged bird-like creatures. Slua is believed to travel through the sky, especially during the twilight hours, and it is associated with a sense of dread and foreboding. According to folklore, the Sluha seeks to capture the souls of the recently deceased or dying, as well as the souls of the living who stand in their way. They hardly care what kind of person the soul belongs to, and once the soul is caught, it is carried away to an unknown realm. It is believed that the Sluha fly in from the west, resulting in the old folk tradition of tightly locking the west side windows of a home. Another legend suggests that the Sluha only appears on the night of Halloween. Ellen Trekkend, a fire-breathing three-headed monster from Irish mythology, is renowned for its ferocity and insatiable appetite for destruction. According to legend, this fearsome beast possessed three bird-like heads, each with a distinct form. Its formidable power was such that it could obliterate entire villages with a single breath. One of the most well-known myths recounts Ellen Trekken's emergence in Ireland from the cave of Crucan, considered a portal to the other world. Once unleashed upon Ireland, the monstrous entity wrecked havoc, laying waste to the land until it met its ultimate demise at the hands of an Irish hero. Lass Heblin is a mythical green cow that can produce an endless amount of delicious milk. In Irish mythology, the cow is the domino effect that seals the fate of the Fomorian king, Balor of the Evil Eye. In the myth, Balor has heard a prophecy that his grandson will someday kill him, so he locks away his only daughter in a tower. Years later, Balor hears about the magical green cow and decides to steal it from Sian, a member of the Tuaid Danann. 
furious that his cow was stolen, Sian ends up sneaking into the tower where Balor's daughter is locked away. The two end up canoodling, thus resulting in the birth of Lu sometime later. Years later, Lu would eventually fulfill the prophecy and kill Balor with his slingshot. The green cow, however, is said to have wandered off after Balor died and disappeared somewhere into Ireland. The Midnight Washerwomen are three women spirits that wash the bloody clothes of those that are about to die. They're usually depicted as three small, pale old women with webbed feet, wearing green shrouds. And while they have the appearance of old women, they're actually incredibly strong. According to legend, they hate being disturbed, and so they ask those that disturb them to help wring the clothes. If the disturber refuses, one of the old women will pick the disturber by the neck and drown them at the water's edge. If the disturber agrees but complains, then one of the washerwomen will break the disturber's arms. If the disturber agrees and doesn't complain, then the three washerwomen will grant the disturber three wishes if they can answer three of their questions truthfully. And that's all we have for today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and leaving a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you stay updated on all our future videos. Alrighty, folks, see you next time on WAM Mythology. The Marrows are the mermaids and mermen of Irish mythology. While the female Marrows are described as beautiful half-woman, half-fish mermaids with green hair and webbed fingers, the male Marrows are ugly with nasty personalities. Unlike their female counterparts, they walk on two legs and have fins on their arms and a tail coming out of their behind. Because of their looks and demeanor, female marrow are known to find a mate amongst human men. Female marrows are able to walk on land by removing the cap that sits on top of their head. By removing it, a marrow's body will transform to look more human-like. But the marrow must return the cap onto their head if they ever wish to return to the sea. In a few legends, a marrow's husband will hide away his wife's cap so that she can't return to the sea. Any children born to a marrow and a human will have webbed fingers, scaly skin, and a calling to the oceans. Caesc is a mermaid from Scottish folklore with the upper body of a beautiful woman and the lower body of a salmon. She not only lives in the sea, but can travel through underwater passages to rivers, streams, and locks. According to legend, anyone who is capable of capturing her will be granted three wishes. In most cases, a man will capture her and wish her to be his wife. This usually results in her having children who have supernatural senses when it comes to controlling ships on the sea. Kaisk even looks after her descendants, protecting them from storms and shipwrecks. Another legend paints Kaisk as a monster. In the legend, she swallows a man who remains alive in her stomach. Luckily for him, his wife plays the harp, and the music puts Kaisk to sleep, allowing the man to escape. Unfortunately, Kaisk later swallows the wife. So the man goes to search for the monster's magical egg, which inside contains her life force. He eventually finds it, crushes it, and frees his wife from the dead creature's stomach. And that's all we have for today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and leaving a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you stay updated on all our future videos. Alrighty, folks, see you next time on WAM Mythology.